Hey y'all, Scott here. I've been on a strict anti-calendar agenda the entire year so far. I have no f***ing clue what month or day it is, so I'm really at a loss as to why both my jeep meter and creep meter are going off the charts. Yeah, that's probably why. Everybody's a bit more accepting of murder, which can only mean one thing. Halloween is here! It's just... it doesn't really feel like it to me. Uh, the calendar may be screaming October, but my body's screaming March. I guess it's because I haven't really been scared yet this month. And of all months, October is prime piss yourself season. I just want to get scared, but it's just not happening. Look, my hand's been bleeding this entire time, it's doing nothing for me. Maybe I've just grown out of Halloween. Which really blows, I love this season. Last year to prove my passion for the holiday, I tried to get the copyright to pumpkins, but all they could give me was gourds. I just need to try, I can't let Halloween lose all of its flavor, I need to get scared by something, anything! Need a quick piss me up? Consider breaking and entering this haunted house. Huh. I don't know, that seems a little too by the numbers for me. People who talk about stupid Nintendo games, beware. Now we're talking, that's the perfect way to scare the piss, and out of me as well! Yeah, this seems like the place. If I really wanted to, I could piss myself out of fear right now, but I'm not gonna do that just to boost this house's ego that much more. No, 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 it has to be genuine fear. That's why I'll be keeping track of the pissometer. Once this baby hits 100%, I've officially scared the piss out of myself and Halloween is saved. Which shouldn't be a problem, because look at this place, it's perfect. And really, what creepy ass old house isn't complete without a Sega CD? The Sega CD was an add-on for the Sega Genesis released in 1992 here in North America. Its primary purpose was initially to be a way to play enhanced Genesis titles. Games like Mortal Kombat, Echo the Dolphin, and Earthworm Jim were originally on the Sega Genesis, but were later brought over to the Sega CD with more content and better music. The CD format allowed for more storage and higher quality graphics and sound, so it was pretty exciting at the time to imagine what that could mean for Genesis owners. Instead, a bunch of companies decided to port over their home movies and we got games like Double Switch and Fahrenheit. Full motion video games, or interactive movies, the Sega CD could run them, so why not? FMV games were nothing new. Dragon's Lair was an arcade game from 83 that was basically just an animated movie where you had to hit the right button at the right time. But now, you could get this kind of game in your living room! Many people thought this would be the future of gaming. I mean, come on, why play a game like this when you could play a game that looked like real life? The problem with FMV games, however, was the gameplay. Boiling them down to their core, you just watch a movie and hit a button at the right time. While the general consensus is that the majority of these FMV games are pretty bogus, they were ahead of their time in some respects. Games like Detroit Become Human, Heavy Rain, and all the Telltale stuff are basically all movies you can play. The difference is, these games have loads more things to keep them interesting. They're actually interactive, you can move around. They're much longer and have branching storylines that make your decisions change how the plot unfolds. However, no other interactive movie will ever have the sheer legacy that the FMV game to end all FMV games has. Night Trap, the interactive horror movie that's responsible for you needing your mom to be with you to buy the latest Call of Duty. The year was 1986. <gasps> Tom Zito was developing a video game console utilizing VHS tapes instead of cartridges or discs. It would have played interactive movie type games and presumably could have simply attached to your pre-existing VCR, making it more appealing cost-wise compared to other systems at the time. The system was codenamed the Nemo, short for Never Ever Mention Outside, but was later referred to as the Control Vision. To aid him in crafting some demos for the system, Rob Fulo and James Riley created the prototype game Scene of the Crime. This was a pretty simple game utilizing multiple surveillance cameras that you had to shift through in order to find out who the culprit was. After presenting the system and demo to Hasbro, they received full funding to continue working on the device and games. The idea of monitoring surveillance cameras from Scene of the Crime stuck and would eventually turn into Night Trap, a game all about swapping between cameras to trap those pesky bees things before they escape. Night Trap was shot in 1987, directed by Riley. It was intentionally campy, and that was a part of the charm. The project required strict time management and continuity between shots due to the surveillance camera concept. They didn't have eight different cameras set up in the eight different locations featured in the game. No, they had to, say, shoot the bedroom scenes, then the bathroom scenes, then the kitchen scenes. So just a character walking from one room to another was a lot more complicated than you may think. But in the end, Night Trap was successfully finished and was set to release alongside the Control Vision in 1989. 
Yeah, the cost for producing Night Trap and Sewer Shark, another FMV game made for the system, both were far greater than Hasbro ever wanted them to be. Also, the pure cost of the Control Vision system itself was far too high to release it in the market. It just didn't make financial sense, and thus it was cancelled and the games were shelved. However, Zito bought the title's rights, started his own FMV game-based company called Digital Pictures, and made a deal with Sega to release Night Trap on the Sega CD. It did okay. Until it was burned at the stake by the US government and then it sold like crazy! Night Trap alongside Mortal Kombat was a key example shown depicting video game violence during a congressional hearing, the same congressional hearing that would lead to the creation of the ESRB rating system. They mostly focused on the infamous bathroom scene where this gal gets her neck pumped. It's weird because during development Hasbro had specific orders to ensure Night Trap would not feature any reproducible violence. For example, these waddling guys were originally supposed to be ninjas attacking the house. But that could have been negatively impressionable on children, so they made these guys act like this and use this claw-looking thing. However, apparently this concerned mother thought that watching this scene would turn all schoolyard boys into Sega CD playing murderers, and nobody wants to see their son play the Sega CD or become a murderer. It just shows how uninformed everybody was during this hearing. Like, they all talked as if the goal in the game is to kill these women, when it's to save them. The people who worked on Night Trap were all pretty surprised by the backlash, especially James Riley. Afterwards, Night Trap was smacked with the same rating as Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies, was later ported to the Sega CD 32X, 3DO, some computers, and that's about it. Night Trap's legacy was basically nothing more than how the original Sega CD release stirred so much controversy. That's all people really knew it for, and it was difficult to imagine it being known for much else due to it getting increasingly harder and harder to play in the modern age. That was until Screaming Villains re-released the game in commemoration of its anniversary. Night Trap 25th Anniversary Edition released on PlayStation 4 in 2017 and is the definitive version of the game. Everything's been retooled and remastered, with loads of extras here as well. A great recollection by James James Riley himself on the development of the game, courtesy of My Life in Gaming, a 1995 documentary on the controversy, and even a playable version of Scene of the Crime, which is great. The physical version was released by Limited Run Games and even features a reversible cover. This side is more true to the original box of the game, while the other looks like the version after the ESRB rating. I personally prefer the original, it really sells the whole B-movie shtick. This version just looks like she's saying, can you believe this? Anyways, this is how the original version on Sega CD looked. It's pretty obvious that if you want to be fully immersed in the Night Trap experience, you really need to play the 25th Anniversary Edition with its non-Sega CD visuals. You can adjust the layout of the game to be more akin to the various re-releases over the years, but we're going to be sticking to the 2017 version. So Night Trap works like this. We have eight different locations to monitor for these waddlers called augers. Your goal is to trap as many of them as possible, and to do that, you just have to select the room they're in, wait for the bar to flash red and then BAM commit a felony. However, a handful of times characters will mess with the access code to the traps. They'll change it to another color, so you have to change your code to that specific color. The color they choose is always random and is more than seamless. No, not that again. Come on Studley, we better change that code. How about red? Sure. Yup, that's the gameplay of Night Trap. The most complicated it gets is changing the access code color. And even then, that only happens like four times in a playthrough. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to beat the game and then explain the plot. Holy sh! What the hell was that? Just to figure out what was going on, I had to do research and watch some edits of the game online that actually turned it into a coherent movie. But, I think I got it. And here's the gist. So there's this house, right? I'm already on board. This vampire family runs it, but nobody knows they're vampires. A bunch of teens were last seen there and have since gone missing, so these guys are like, whoa, there's something fishy going on there. We better send out our best to investigate. Yup, the girl from Different Strokes. So this vampire family is trying to lure teens in their house by getting their daughter to have a slumber party and invite some over, including Kelly, the undercover agent. These things called augers are all over the house. They're like vampires that need blood and use these nifty nabbers to get it from people's neck since they're super weak, so there is an official canonical reason why they all waddle. The traps in the house are set up for the vampire family to trap the teens, but the control team hacked into it, so you have to use the traps against them. The girls are all oblivious to the augers and the family's vampiric tendencies, and I can't blame them, I only found out about halfway through. <laughs> Sarah, what is this? No, they're vampires. Sarah, we're in this huge house with all your friends. We have telephones, we have a car, your parents are gone, and you say so? Come on, Sarah, what's the first thing you think of? Party! Ah, so no parents, no rules equates to this. It works better without music. One of the girl's little brother is one of the first to come in contact with the augers, and man, I don't know. This guy's constipated and weed whacking inside. What's the big deal? 
Well, we gotta get out of here. They're after us. You start all conversations like that? Hey, look, we've made it to the infamous bathroom scene. Now that's what I call a resume builder. Eventually, Kelly figures out that these things in the family are vampires, so then it's a bunch of ah, eek, yikes, and holy sh**. Fucking <laughs> vampires. You, who are you? We're scat. That's me! The parents end up returning alongside the scat team, raiding the house, demanding answers. I don't think you understand, Mr. Martin, but you're in serious trouble here. <laughs> you can't arrest a vampire? They end up fighting the family, but eventually you're able to trap them all. Yeah, bullets can't stop this guy, but not the wall trap! There are multiple endings, some where Kelly is bitten by one of the family members, and a few positive ones where you capture most or all of the bad guys, and even one where you can capture Kelly at the very end. Now that's basically Night Trap, and you may ask, oh, why did you have such a hard time following the plot? It seems as simple as, ah! Vampires. Here's the thing, the plot looks like this while you're playing the game. For a game that has so much full motion video, touting it has over an hour and a half of it, Night Trap slaps the video out of your hand, wagging its finger and saying, No, you have to watch these fucking gremlins waddling around. If you actually want to beat the game or even get far in it at all, you can only watch for the augers. All of this is a distraction. But that isn't fun. It's literally like watching all your friends play outside without you. Like, man, I wish I could actually watch these clips, but instead I have to wait for these fucking dopes to walk by so I can trap them. If you spend more than five seconds on a clip of people talking and, you know, describing what's actually going on, you just missed like five augers and you're inevitably gonna get a game over. The main goal is to get all 100 captures. You can get around 70 or so to beat the game, but a handful of the captures are required and result in immediate game over if you don't trap them. It's just that 100 captures is so many, they just keep on coming. There's no room to sit down and just follow the plot. Most of the time, you're just watching these clips over and over again. It's all just a memory game and requires a ton of replays if you want to beat it purely. And Jesus, the original version didn't even have previews of what's going on in each room. You just had to hop around aimlessly. Beating the game from start to finish takes 25 minutes if you know exactly what to do, which after consulting a walkthrough is what I did, so you can officially consider me a Night Trap speedrunner now. I enjoy Night Trap as a novelty and as a campy B-movie, but as an actual game, I hate it. Like I said, to play the game correctly, you have to ignore the main piece of entertainment you can derive from this game, which is the campy story scenes. You may say, that's a part of the game design. It's about not getting distracted and honing in on the main goal, which is protecting the girls and capturing the augers. Yeah, I get that, but it doesn't make it any less boring and tedious. I guess that's part of the appeal for some people, knowing that there's no way to see everything from the game on one playthrough. Night Trap is neither a game or a movie. It's kind of its own thing. And I have a lot more respect for the game than I think a lot of other people do. For what it tries to pull off, I think it did a fairly decent job, especially for the late 80s, early 90s. The problem is, as an interactive experience, it's not nearly as enjoyable to play or watch as you'd want it to be. If you want the campiness, go watch a cut of the game on YouTube. You'll actually understand what's going on. Well that blew. Seriously, Night Trap and the Sega CD. I should be completely pissed out by now, but no, the pissometer remains incomplete. Halloween will never be the same until it's filled. It's my honor to tell you, you have a urinary tract infection.